Hello, welcome to Guidance Education Channel. We are continuing Chapter 1, Class 12, Physics. The chapter is Charges and Field. Under that, we are doing Electric Dipole. In this video, we are going to discuss Electric Dipole in Non-Uniform Electric Field. If you think the video is useful, like the video, share the video and also leave your comments in the comment box below. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, do subscribe it and also press the bell button for notification. Also see the description box where I give details. I also add a few questions there which you may practice. Thank you. In this video, we will discuss Electric Dipole in external non-uniform electric field. We have already discussed electric dipole in external uniform electric field. Click the I button in order to watch that. That is the representation of the uniform electric field. For uniform electric field, the magnitude and direction of the electric field is same throughout. It doesn't change. That is, everywhere its value, that is magnitude and direction remains constant. It is the same. Non-uniform electric field is represented by lines which are not uniformly spaced. Look at this diagram. This is how it is represented. The lines are crowded at this end. It suggests that the magnitude of electric field is more at this point. Here the field lines are spaced apart. But at this end, they are crowded. So, the electric field is less at this end. They are spaced apart. For the sake of explanation, this non-uniform electric field is represented by an arrow-headed straight line. And it is noted that it is increasing electric field direction. Electric field is less at the tail of the arrow and more at the head of the arrow. Farther towards the right side of this picture, the electric field lines will become more and more crowded, suggesting that the electric field is more along those regions. You can notice that the direction also is different. It is curving, so the direction is different. This direction of the arrow in each line suggests that the electric field is increasing in that direction. In the coming sessions, we will be using this representation that is a single arrow headed straight line with the writing the increasing electric field direction to represent non-uniform electric field. The magnitude and direction of the electric field at different regions is different. Consider the three zones in diagram. At this end, the electric field is maximum. Here it is a little less and here it is very much less. How did we represent electric field due to a positive charge? The field lines radiate outward and we represent it in the form of arrow-headed lines. Farther away from the charge, the arrow-headed lines are shown smaller and smaller. That is, the magnitude becomes less and less. Solar energy travels through the space and reaches the earth in the form of electromagnetic waves. So, it has electric property as well as magnetic property. So, in space, there is always an electric field. There is no need to show a separate source charge. All we need to do is only show the direction of the electric field. Okay, now we have to discuss three important cases. One, electric dipole resting parallel to the direction of the increasing electric field. Second one, dipole resting anti-parallel to the direction of the increasing electric field and third one dipole resting at an angle to the increasing electric field direction this topic is very favorite for examiners so do not skip this portion now we will discuss the first case this is the increasing electric field direction and this is the alignment of the electric dipole p is along this direction parallel to the increasing electric field when a dipole is parallel to the uniform electric field there is no torque and there is no force but here it is not so force on negative q f1 equal to negative q e1 electric field experienced by negative q is e1 that by positive Q is E2. They are different because the electric field is non 
uniform. The direction of negative Q event is anti-parallel to dipole moment direction. Force experienced by positive Q is equal to F2 and it is equal to Q E2. Direction is parallel to electric dipole moment and also increasing electric field direction. It is opposite to F1. The net force will be the sum of these two forces Q E2 and Q E1. Q E1 is negative therefore Q E2 minus Q E1 which is equal to Q into E2 minus E1. E2 is bigger than E1. So E2 minus E1 will have some value. So there is a net force. Since F2 is a bigger force, the direction of net force will be equal to the direction of dipole moment and increasing electric field direction. Here the two ends of the dipole is experiencing two different forces. That is why there is a net force. Here it is not equal to zero. What will be its effect on the dipole? The dipole will experience translatory motion along this direction. That is in the direction of the increasing electric field direction. This is much different from what happened in the case of uniform electric field. I have noted the point there. Okay. What about torque? Torque tau is equal to PE sin theta. Here theta is equal to 0 because P and E are in same direction. Sin 0 is equal to 0 therefore torque is equal to 0. There is no torque. It will not turn or rotate. It will only experience translatory motion. In non-uniform electric field the dipole experiences force because negative Q E1 is not equal to positive Q E2. That is the point you have to remember. Okay. Second case. That is the dipole moment direction is anti-parallel to electric field increasing direction. I will make a representation. The increasing electric field direction and dipole moment direction are in opposite direction. They are anti-parallel. Let us first consider the net force experienced by it. At this end electric field is less and at this end the electric field is high. So in this case F1 the smaller force is at positive Q and it is equal to QE1. F2 is equal to QE2 is negative. F1 force experienced by positive is along this direction. F2 the force experienced by negative Q is in the opposite direction like this. Force experienced by negative Q is greater than force experienced by positive Q because the magnitude of electric field is more at negative Q. So net force will be equal to Q into E1 minus minus E2. E1 is smaller than E2. So there will be some force. Why? Because Q E1 is not equal to Q E2. So the direction of the net force will be along this direction. The increasing electric field direction is along this line. What will be the effect of this force on the electric dipole? The dipole moves. It experiences a translatory motion in the direction of the dipole moment and anti-parallel to the direction of the increasing electric field direction. That is opposite to the direction of electric field direction. What about torque? What is the formula for torque? Torque tau is equal to PE sin theta. What is sin theta here? That is theta is equal to 180 degrees because they are resting anti-parallel to each other. Sin 180 is equal to 0. So, no torque. So, the dipole does not rotate. It only experiences translatory motion. Just as in the previous case where it was resting parallel to increasing electric field direction. In both cases, the direction of translatory motion is along the dipole moment direction. But when it is resting parallel to the increasing electric field direction, it is in the direction of the electric field. But when it is resting anti-parallel to the increasing electric field, Field direction it is anti-parallel to the electric field direction. Now the third case this is the increasing electric field direction. Dipole rests at an angle theta to the increasing electric field direction. At this end electric field is less let us mark it as E1. At the other end the electric field is more and let us mark it as E2. This is suggested by the increasing electric 
field representation. So force experienced by negative Q is equal to negative Q E1 equal to F1. Force experienced by positive Q is equal to Q E2 equal to F2. Two unequal forces are acting at two opposite ends and there is an angle with the electric field direction. Let us first consider the net force experienced by the electric dipole. Net force is equal to F1 plus F2. Substituting for F1 and F2 we get F is equal to negative QE1 plus QE2 that is QE2 minus QE1 which is Q into E2 minus E1. E2 is greater than E1 so there is some force acting on the electric dipole. Therefore, the dipole will exhibit translatory motion. What will be the direction of this motion? It will be along the increasing electric field direction. Because F1 is a smaller force, it is acting against electric field increasing direction. F2, the larger force, acts along the direction of the increasing electric field. So, translatory motion is along the increasing electric field direction. Torque tau is equal to PE sin theta. Here theta has some value therefore there is torque. It will experience rotatory motion as well. I will draw a separate diagram to explain that. What is the effect of the force? This is the non-uniform electric field. Dipole shows translatory motion. See the motion of the dipole. Torque is equal to PE sin theta. Theta is not equal to zero. So there is torque. Force on positive Q is along the direction of electric field and force on negative Q is in the opposite direction. What is the effect of torque? The dipole turns in the clockwise direction to align with the increasing electric field direction. But the electric field is non-uniform. So the dipole turns, turns and turns. At the same time, it experiences translatory motion also. So it rotates on and on and moves in the direction of the electric field. Motion is helical. This is the electric dipole resting in non-uniform electric field. See how the electric dipole takes a helical path. The helix can be represented like this. It is in this direction. We have taken only a very simple case here. For different directions of the increasing electric field and also orientation of the electric dipole, the helical path may show variation. We are not going into the details of that at present. I hope these points were quite clear to you. This is a very important portion. So, practice it thoroughly. We will meet in the next video with another important topic like this. Till then, bye. Thank you.